again, ladies and gents, I'm a big thank you to NUS and to Yossi. It gives me great pleasure that we will be welcoming the stage for a keynote address from Minister Ibrahim, Minister in charge of communications and information. And we've got a few exciting things that are going to be happening straight after this. So ladies and gentlemen, if you'll give me the opportunity to welcome the minister to the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very good morning to all of you. Singapore is indeed proud to host InnoFest Unbound. The event name is fitting. Innovation often requires us to be unbound by inherent constraint, and in many ways, being unbound by constraint is also the Singapore story. Singapore's founding fathers were acutely aware of our constraints. We are small, and we lack natural resources. So when Singapore became independent in 1965, we have a population of 1.9 million people, a nominal GDP per capita of about 500 US dollars, but these conditions never deterred us from punching above our weight in the global arena. Dealt with such a hand of cards, we had to be creative and innovative in building the Singapore economy. We opened our economy to external markets as our forefathers envisioned Singapore to be a meeting point for conducting business within the East and the West, Singapore as the global business hub. Being unbound by size, resources, constraints, and borders, we developed a growth strategy that has served us well in that economic era. But we are entering into a different era today, where a world of mainframes and desktops is making way for cloud and the digital economy. Singapore needs to innovate and enhance our growth strategy to overcome our physical limitations and bring good jobs and opportunities to all Singaporeans in the digital age, and no Singaporean will be left behind. As part of Singapore's roadmap to become a smart nation, our enhanced growth strategy for the digital economy will go hand in hand with our digital government strategies. In fact, as we speak, the Singapore head of civil service, Mr. Peter Ong, is currently making a speech about digital government at the Digital Government Exchange. Indeed, both the public and private sectors have important and complementary roles to play. So let me now align three key trusts of our enhanced growth strategy for the digital economy. The Singapore government has never shied away from taking calculated risks in investing in the future as evidence in the Singapore story. For the digital economy, it is imperative that we make strategic decisions on where and how Singapore will harness frontier technologies to develop capabilities that will power our future economy. These technologies have begun to disrupt and more importantly, redefine the way we live, work and play. They also bring immense opportunities for growth if we could harness them and build new capabilities. So during the Committee of Supply speech in March, I mentioned that we would be increasing our investments on frontier technologies such as artificial intelligence and data science. AI has emerged due to a confluence of three factors, the availability of big data, advances in high-performance computing, and the invention of new learning algorithms and architecture. The potential gains from an enabler technology like AI are indeed massive. So today, I'm happy to announce the establishment of AI.SG, a new national program to boost Singapore's AI capabilities. AI.SG will be driven by a partnership comprising the National Research Foundation, Smart Nation and Digital Government Office at the Prime Minister's Office, the Economic Development Board, or EDB, the Infocom Media Development Authority, or IMDA, SG Innovate, and the Integrate Health Information System, or IHIS. AI.SG will do three things. First, address major challenges that affect both society and industry. Secondly, invest in deep capabilities to catch the next wave of scientific innovation, and finally, to grow AI innovation and adoption in companies and initiatives most pertinent to our business community. We have identified three focus areas of application for AI.SG, finance, city management solutions, and healthcare. So for example, in the area of healthcare, we will soon be able to benefit from the various trial applications of AI by IHIS and their partners. In about three years' time, our doctors and nurses could find themselves immersed 
in simulated emergency situations and interact with virtual patients in realistic augmented reality-based environments to enhance their training for better patient care. I'm also happy to announce that NRF has collaborated with the National University of Singapore, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore Management University, and the Agency for Science, Technology and Research, or ASTAR, to set up the Singapore Data Science Consortium. The consortium will strengthen collaborative research linkages between our institutes of higher learning, research institutes, and of course, the industry. This will help industry to adopt data science and analytics technologies to address real-world challenges. So I look forward to more demand-driven AI and data science innovation and adoption in Singapore. AI and data science are key frontier technologies that the Singapore government will harness and build capabilities in. In the longer run, such investments will enhance the economic opportunities for all Singaporeans. In the upcoming months, I'll speak more about other key frontier technologies that Singapore will invest as part of our enhanced growth strategy. Our second trust is to help promising Singapore-based tech product companies. Accreditation at IMDA, a key initiative launched in 2014, collaborates with SG Innovate and industry accelerators to provide customized assistance to high-growth startups and small and medium enterprises, or SMEs, to accelerate their growth and to internationalize through IE Singapore and our enterprise partners. So, for example, Vika Mengi, a co-founder of data analytics company Lattice, have always found it a challenge to get decision makers to spend time understanding their product before they were accredited. accredited. After getting accredited, Vikram said it has become much easier to do so. Vikram and his team was also able to close their first funding round much faster as investors rely on IMD's accreditation evaluation for their technical due diligence. The success of their fundraising, coupled with the track record that they have built through the accreditation process, has helped them to expand and establish their first overseas office in Sydney and Perth. They have since won two projects in Australia. And to date, accreditation has accredited 17 companies, and accreditation will continue to help promising enterprises like Lattice to grow and to internationalize. Accreditation will progressively establish key partners in various sectors to help accredited companies scale up more effectively. So today, I'm pleased to announce that IMD's partnership with DBS, UOB, and OCBC which have been very active in creating and supporting innovative fintech solutions. Through these partnerships, accreditation at IMDA will support the banks in, dri in driving innovative fintech solutions within the organizations and the sector. The partnership will also enable IMDA accredited companies to scale up by gaining access to real problem statements and opportunities to work on innovative fintech projects within the banks and expand into international markets to the bank's global footprint. As with startups, the Singapore government will also continue to provide customized support for SMEs to seize opportunities in the digital economy. In my speech in Parliament in February, I talked about how SMEs go digital will help our SMEs' overall level of digital readiness to help them at the various stages of their digital transformation journey. By today, I'm pleased to hear that the SMEs Go Digital now has close to 50 pre-approved digital tech solutions that our SMEs could tap on to innovate. So an example is the 3D Internet of Things platform for smart technology solution by Asahi Security Technologies. This security solution helps building and business operators to better manage and control situations and improve decision-making through 3D visualizations in the command center. SME Go Digital will continue to support SMEs to transform in their digital journey, be able to embrace innovation, and to scale up. Our third trust builds on one of Singapore's founding strengths, talent development. As we enter into the digital economy, Singapore will need to build a strong pipeline of digital scientists with skills in frontier tech areas such as AI. Through our engagement with the industry, we are keenly aware that the steady pipeline of quality tech talent is critical for businesses to break new frontiers in the digital economy, to grow and scale the businesses, especially as your time to market continues to shorten in the tech industry. 
So again, at the budget this year, I reiterate the importance of tech talent development. When I talk about the good work that IMD's Tech Skills Accelerator or TESA is doing, as part of this stress, oh, sorry, as part of this trust, TESA will continue to equip the Singaporean workforce with tech skills for the digital economy. In the areas of frontier technology, where we have yet to build up deep capabilities, we will continue to be open to global talent. Together, we can build a pipeline of digital scientists who help businesses at all enterprise levels to hasten your speed to market in the digital economy. Beyond manpower, Singapore will continue to enhance other aspects of our ecosystem, including first-class connectivity infrastructure and a conducive regulatory environment to support the innovation journey of all enterprises. We know that the way ahead will not be easy, Hence, it will be all hands on deck for the government to help businesses succeed in the digital economy. So what I've outlined today will be complemented by efforts from many other agencies, such as Startup SG's Founder Initiative, which will encourage first-time entrepreneurs to start new businesses in frontier tech areas, and SG Innovates Bash, Singapore's all-in-one facility to help build tech communities and networks across the entire value chain. Hence, events like InnoFest Unbound are critical as Singapore innovates and enhances our growth strategy for the digital economy to bring, greater, to bring together leading entrepreneurs, brands, corporates, investors, and tech startups from around the world to expand networks, share experiences, and showcase ideas. I have no doubt that we will see the most innovative tech ideas here, igniting a passion for innovation among Singaporeans, young and old, from all walks of life. This year's InnoVest Unbound features four additional satellite events to highlight the trends shaping the world of tech, and I'm sure that you'll make plans on how best to harness these tech developments for your endeavors, as will the Singapore government. So let us be your partner in innovation in this journey as we charge ahead together in the digital economy. I wish all of you an inspiring two days ahead of innovation and networking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much.